What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Creek Ninjas. I'm Ben. You probably already knew that already. <laughs> Jacob's behind the camera filming already. Um, we finally got some really steady, warmer weather coming in. So um, a lot of times that water temperature starts to rise, those fish will start moving in some shallow riffle stuff. So here behind me, just all this down through here, we've got some shallow riffles. I'm gonna see if we can catch a couple fish on a dry fly. You never know. So I'm gonna talk about some uh, just dry fly fishing, just single dry fly fishing. Um, and what I use personally, and what seems to be the best, I use a Syndicate P2 a lot of times. It's a 10 foot three weight. I like that 10 foot rod and the Syndicate in particular, just because because of different, you know, a lot of other nymphing rods, the guy just a little farther with the Syndicate compared to some other nymphing rods on the market. Um, and personally, I like it. It's a little slower, so it loads up real good. Um, and I'm just throwing a regular, just level nymphing line with a little bit shorter leader. Um, but it works the best. And I'm just going to kind of do some tips and stuff casting wise with this super light setup and without longer rod and the advantages that you have with it. Let's tear it up. So what I'm throwing on right here, it's a little bit bigger bug. It's a little clueless caddis. It's actually on a jig hook. I believe Jacob tied this one or something, but the floats real good. It's a CDC and deer hair mixture with a little bit of flash in that body. Um, sometimes it's creams them. Um, it's a good attractor dry. It's a it good, is. It's a good fish finder. Fish finder, but it's also a good dry dropper fly. Just sits, sits up real high up in the water column. It's dirty. Let's see if I'm going to lead him. Put some floating on there. Get it prepared. We like to use high and dry floating. You high seen, and dry. You've seen this in the indicator video. This yep. stuff works oh. wonders. <laughs> this stuff right there. High and dry. It sticks on you though. It's not it? it's not like Flyagra though that has butane in it, so it doesn't smell like gasoline, which is nice. That's unfortunate. This stuff like it leaves a residue but you know it's good for you what if i dumped it all over me i wonder if i dumped it all over me if i'd float <laughs> and you're done <laughs> all right so first thing i'm going to talk about is casting a single dry fly i'm going to step back a little bit if you don't there's no need there's no need to do this that is not needed <laughs> that is not needed Literally, it is just literally all it takes. What's so nice about a dry fly is you got that weight for line 90% of the time. You just let that water load it up and it flicks right up. It does almost all the work for you. Literally, all you got to do, that fly just sitting there behind you, look at where you want it to go. That's it. Basically, no effort. Just look at where you want to go, point the rod. It's just nothing over. And another thing I want to talk about. I see a lot of people when they're fishing dry flies and they'll make that cast and that line will be directly straight out in front of them. I mean, it will be out there and that line will be like a foot. And it'll go out. I mean, that, I've still left a little bit of curve in that line. So, some people throw it too straight and if their fly drags from the start as it hits the water. You, mm -hmm. want, you want to leave some slack in it. And a lot of times, especially fishing big, big open water, I'll purposely put extra slack in that line just so with those, you know, a big river, you got a bunch of different opposing currents hitting that. It can, you know, that fly line can start shifting in weird ways and pull that, pull those flies and make them do some weird stuff and make that unnatural drift. So if you leave some extra slack in it, you know, it takes a little bit longer. It will do it eventually, but it'll take it a little bit longer to really mess with it. Um, you get a cleaner drift. You get a cleaner drift, exactly. That fish just tried to eat that. He just tried to eat that thing. I pulled it out of the water. Eat it. Oh, <laughs> Terry, no. He's looking for it. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it, boy. Eat it. Get it. Oh, that's the same one. I got a little distracted there. My bad. Um, but one more thing. I hope these. I hope some of these little tricks will help you out. Um, one other thing that one. Hey. Oh, Jacob. <laughs> just like Jacob sneezed. <laughs> I don't know if any of y'all know this. This gentleman, 
Jacob Rooster back here sneezes more than any human being I've ever <laughs> met in my life. And it's not just regular sneezes. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it is like, <laughs> it, is, it is not normal. Now you got me distracted again. Anyway, anyway, enough rambling. One more thing that I like to do when I'm, when I'm just really casting in general, either casting streamers or anything, is two things. Either put that finger right on top of my, like, facing up the blank, going along with it, or sit it right on top. And what that does is keeps everything in line. It keeps you from twisting that reel back and forth and messing with that spine. You want that rod, when you're loading it up, you want that rod to load directly back, straight up, to load that back spine, and go forward with it. If you go sideways, a lot of times if you go sideways with it, and do some weird things, it's gonna, you'll lose a lot of power. So try to keep that... Keep that thumb either right on top of that blank, keeps that rod nice and straight, and keeps you a little more accurate, or put that finger on top and just look at it. And it's almost like if you're gonna point at something, it's like hand-eye coordination. If I wanna, if I'm gonna point at something, that's, I'm pointing directly at it. Same thing with that finger on top. I do that a lot when I'm nipping. If I'm looking at it and I look at something, and I just point at it, you're gonna, I mean, it's gonna go right to it within reason. You know, it takes a little bit of practice, but that does help a lot. But like I said, hope some of this helps you. About, these fish are back. That fish back there sitting up some bank. He just ate a caddis sitting next to the bank. Yeah, there's some caddis hatching off. There's several coming down the riffle, some up on the bank. And yeah, Ben's going to Ben's gonna see if we can uh, catch a fish and not lose it this time. Good soup. So if you, you know, if you apply the My bad, you probably saw that. Jacob's probably gonna do something funny, edit with me throwing water all over the camera. What if it would have done it again right there? Just <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, crisis averted. So like I was saying, if you put, you know, if you put what I've told you kind of in these, these just these little tips, I mean, into, into act, you know, it can really increase your dry fly game. And it really has for me. And I've learned, I've learned from a lot of different people. And I'm not not at all saying I'm the best in the world. That is not what I'm saying in the least bit. But Definitely you know, have, not. <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> obviously. But, um, you know, that's just some stuff that I've learned about, about just fishing a single dry fly. You know, and it really does work. And, you know, there's always an emphasis a single dry fly and stuff. But... You know, it, there it really is a time and place for it. If you get those right conditions, you can really whack some fish doing it. When some other conditions, you know, you could, you know, yeah, you could probably nip all this water that we're not throwing a dry fly in, but why throw a why throw a nip when you can get them to come up and just sip it on top? And hopefully, hopefully those videos turned out good, getting them to eat it right on top. But hope y'all learned something. Hope you have a good day, Jacob. You better, you can't, you gotta say bye. Come on, son. You can't leave him hanging. You can't leave Jacob out. Apparently, I have to be in the video, too, even though I'm behind the camera. But, yeah, you know, dry fly fishing is fun. Why are you zooming in? <laughs> dry fly fishing is fun. Like like Ben said, if you come across the run and you see a couple fish rise, try to catch them on a dry. Don't just nip them up. I mean, if you're in a competition and you know you have to, you know, you catch more fish nymph and do it, but, yeah. I mean, we're fly fishermen. It's a dry fly. <laughs> Why not? You're going to do it. If you don't, you're, you're retarded, but no, you're stupid. I shouldn't say that, you know. Jacob, naughty. Don't leave out the dry fly. <laughs> they are your friends. <laughs> Good luck to you, everybody.